just spoon talk. But welcome back to Spoon Talk, everyone. <laughs> My name is Josie, your dear Travis in disguise for today. And we're back with more spoons. And not a lot to eat with them. But I mm. shall give the pause back to Tom. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if we, we we learned a lot in in these few minutes of break, like uh, pickle theory and uh, all, all different kinds of spoons, and it's <laughs> yeah. Um, I I have to come back to to this very serious game of mage the towers of spoons. Um, we're very serious here. Nothing silly ever happens. Um, <laughs> all these games are incredibly serious and dark and gritty. Nothing silly ever happens. <laughs> We're all deeply serious gamers here with our with our dice and our numbers and our math degrees. Mm -hmm. I, I think if you look into any other actual play I've run, <laughs> this this uh message wouldn't be necessarily wrong uh, as, as someone who was in the changeling game yeah <laughs> uh, yeah so uh but but we are back to well spoon tower expansion for those who just joined us we are looking at a group of uh, happy mages who just found a chamber called the echo which amplifies magic in a strange and interesting way and of course uh after half of the dampening spell to to make sure nothing goes completely out of line failed everyone started to whiz it away and using spells and now we are in the room not only containing three freshly baked mages one unconscious mage one person who actually owns this place and um just plays along so nothing worse happens a satyr and an expanding tower of spoons next to the most magnificent spoon in the world and in this place that could remind one of a um very nice dining room we um we see on the table there is this tower built from spoons and as the satyr works his magic it expands and grows and um if anybody looks at moira uh you can see how sweat is running down her face as um the innate powers of your friend from the other side turns the place basically upside down and you leave dining room and you enter spoon tower entrance hall did i just with my little buddy fuck over a big mage's orders dining room that they use for very serious things and they're turning into a spoon tower probably yes fuck yeah Take that, and take now they're dining tower. True, and take that, mage fascists. Interestingly, it's only the four of you and the satyr who are in this place. Moira isn't here. She wasn't invited. Does she not oh. have the password to your big spoon fortress? Uh, she is like, I don't know. Um, what's it called when when you you tie people up with chains to the to the legs and have a big like cannonball at the end of the chain so they can move 
slowly only and be a real drag ball and chain <laughs> yes the oh, wow. chainicles that's that's the thing the barnacles yes a that's barnacle it. person she is a barnacle person and this is this is really nice you know it's pretty good place i think see that's the power of teamwork hmm. well <clears throat> speaking of more teamwork i promise you something yeah and i pick up a spoon from the floor that is made of spoons it's um okay. Just a regular wooden spoon. And first of all, I'm going to pump willpower in this, which is three extra dice. Correct. correct? And I'm going to attempt to cast a uh, monkey paw, which I I have cast this one. Yeah, I've cast this one before. That's why I have it in my brain. Uh, I attempt to cast a spell. Uh, it's Fate Gnosis and your three additional dice. For a willpower. And yes. I and I think <laughs> you don't want my deal. Is it going to change from the, from the last time? Um, no, but I, um, no, I think the deal is off the table. <laughs> there is a plus two bonus from the location <laughs> okay how many is that that's four successes that's four successes so please tell the audience what monkey paws is and does um a monkey paw is you make a lifeless object into something that is a lucky charm, but ten times better. Um, you can either like curse or bless it, but for obvious reasons, I'm going to bless it for this little little big guy. Um, mechanically, it's, you add things to rolls and all that jazz. Who rolls even? But it, it's it's like this really good luck charm now. Like this spoon might one day save your life. By, I don't know if it was a metal spoon blocking a bullet that was shot directly into like the cup side but it, because it would be there magically co coincidentally you put it in you put it in the wash and it ended up in like the inside of a pair of pants weeks before it just all fits together way too well like the dice are a little bit weighted in your favor and that's the weight you carry with you the monkey paw and why did you pick this spoon because it was the first one I laid eyes upon when I laid eyes upon the floor did you hesitate I was gonna make sure that it wasn't scuffed or anything sure it was decent looking mm -hmm. dust it off a little I don't know just if there's no big defects mm -hmm. because not everything that's lucky should be extraordinary because then people want to steal it off of you And your friend eyes this spoon. And suddenly appears to be very solemnly. It's a good pick. It is. 
And even if it wasn't, it is now. Very much so. You're right. You are very, very right about this. And I put the spoon on, like if he stretches his hand out or something, I don't know. To like fold his hands that are twice my size over the spoon. And How far he... am I getting close to even? He produces the loyalty card. And um, once again licks it. But a little bit more um, with um, the only word that are, comes to my mind right now is respect. I'm not entirely sure if it's if it's respect, but there is something in the way he moves. A sense of duty. Yeah, yeah, in this direction. Yeah, it's with some earnesty and. Um, He takes a spoon, looks at you, and says, Well, pretty close to even. I'm speaking in stamp terms. One. Good. Very good. <laughs> You're doing good. You're doing great. How does that influence you? Do you want me to succeed in things? I... I think so, yes. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. I... For a second, I, I thought that would be very boring, but I feel like it would be a good, good time to, you know, go back home f for now. Okay, as long as you promise that loyalty cards don't get extra stamps if one stamp is left on over time you're doing much worse right now and uh, just just you can I, go home sure but i'll just why come should see, come i see me again when you want that final stamp done y yes i and i'm not making promises about natural order and stuff like that's nothing you, you make a promise because then somebody will find a way to break shit just to mess with you no not gonna make a promise about this since when are you the one being panicky about others making a mess out of something and am i the one actually being very slightly amused by it oh how do tables have turned i think he lived longer hadn't seen more the word of someone magical is not just a word. But oh, how the tables have turned and the tables are made out of spoons. Yes, I like spoon tables. This is this is all right. Um, well, is there anything I could do for you? I look at my compatriots. What are you even supposed to do? I think they we're are supposed still... to get out of here. Well, we're to... In fact, that's what I was told to do to get out of here. Um, Can he get us out of here? What? 
and uh, a very mythological gentleman get us out of here. I would love to do this. I could actually bring you to a different place. But I fear you won't be able to leave from there to wherever you want to go, except to here. Okay. Got anything that might help us with leaving? Where you... would you take us? Well, home. W whose home? My home. Is that where yeah. I was? Kinda. But also in like, not... you know, place that architecture happened to is is not in my front yard anymore. Okay, but it's in the same realm then, right? Kinda, yeah. Because ish. The, because that ish info even is contradictory to other information I have gotten in the last half hour. Thank you. Okay. I mean... I point if, if um, Mora is outside or something. I don't know if you can like see her from like a little spoon window. I was like... <laughs> Not cases. Before the, the very large gentleman leaves, I, I go towards him and offer him my hand. And uh, <laughs> th thanks for help creating this marvelous architecture Tom, that brings a blessing to the world. Tom, don't you dare. Don't you fucking dare. You. Because it was not said as the character in game. And you know that. Um. I wish the stream could see Tom's face right now. <laughs> Look, this, um. is a, this is, a, this is a, a practically one shot with not many episodes left. If something weird happens. Yeah, but, but, but uh, he is bound um uh did yeah um mm. can you not you can you, you can see several emotions going through the expressions of the friend and then he doesn't accept your hand and says you're certainly welcome then I give a slight bow the handshake is not to your nature well no. let's say it's um it's not the opportune moment. Then maybe another. We could go spelunking together. Oh, I would like that. Great. So, um, do do you do you have need for? Palace de Roy Spoon Tower. I really much like it. Oh, you can take it home. Um, not necessarily wanting it, but I could get rid of it for you. Oh no, leave it, leave it. It's such a beautiful thing. Because it's a tower, it has multiple floors, they can stack artifacts in there, they can have multiple rooms for studying. It's very useful. Yeah, they, they got more rooms to, to put very tiny spells inside. We did them a favor. Yeah. 
Man. Yeah, no, you're not wrong there. You're not wrong there. You're muted. <laughs> Looking to find the uh, mute button. Uh, Sure. The Spoon Tower? I don't want anything from the Spoon Tower. I want to be finished with the Spoon Tower, and I want to not be here right now. If the Spoon Tower could give me an iced coffee, I'd be good. That I think is the, I, I don't know what to ask a spoon tower for. Why is this even a theoretical question? I, I want, I, no, but like, why is it even in the realm of possibility that the spoon tower might give me some? I don't care. It's a spoon tower. No, no. We work for a multinational conglomerate of questionable moral constituency. And you think business works with spoon towers? No, that's not how it works. Sure, uh, you can have any favors that I have accrued from the spoon tower and just later we'll figure something out. Huh? Great. I grant to you all of my spoon tower related benefits. I hope it comes with dental. <laughs> You're welcome. You shouldn't bite the spoons. It's, you know, no. teeth. Nobody's oh, going to bite the spoons. No one's going to put the spoons in microwaves. But you have your spoon. I, I grant, can we do that? I grant unto her all rights and privileges related to the Spoon Tower? Yes. And then she will just, she'll get me on the next shout. Yeah. Great. Great. I'm glad. Hmm. I mean, technically. Uh, but you I know have what? an ibuprofen for you. Here, have some ibuprofen. You're welcome. There. Now you do not need to give her ibuprofen because she owes me for the ibuprofen. You're a fast learner. I am. Also, I'm a woman and that's just what we do for each other, especially if... And you work in law. Yeah. Uh, us, us girls got to look out for each other, at, you know, cramps, not wearing white once a month, you know, things like that. He doesn't seem to, to get what you're trying to tell him, but then he decides it's not important because he probably isn't a girl. And so, well, okay, it's time to actually leave. And, um, well, since you really like the tower, it shall stay with these people. If they deserve it, I don't know. But, well, you do you. And he uh, walks over uh, to one of the walls and there's one spoon sticking out. And he picks, uh, pulls the spoon and opens a door and for a brief moment one can see honey colored glass shards um weaving and bowing on the ground like long long grass leaves and there is the smell of honey uh, and um, strawberry and cream lollipops 
and there there is a moon made out of moss in the sky yeah just like this just just as wind and and he leaves and closes the door behind him and you're left behind satyrless satyrless but very towerful that person reminds me of what happened if you mix Willy Wonka with Chuck with the uh, Trans Labyrinth. Yeah, I encountered that thing when I first awoke. Imagine that, huh? Of I imagine something way better. Of course, you accrue some debt if you're in a situation like that. But it helped me mm -hmm. somewhat. And look, there's. I think there was worse things we could have pulled out of Nightmare Water Place. Right. I'm glad and sad that we did not pull out the creature that I first met. An angel would have been useful. Much like a dreamy look in my eyes as I reminiscent my creation tutorial. And I look over at Nancy, who's probably still like in a corner somewhere, going like, Ugh. "Yeah, <laughs> you were too busy with spoons, Judith. You weren't paying attention to your daughter. She needs a spoonful of honey. Makes the medicine go down. That's for sure. So, what's our plan next, huh? Maybe we should find more about it." Does anyone know how we get out of the tower? I think there's a door. There is a door. He looks to fuck me over, but not that far ahead. <laughs> I, so, hmm? is this, it is um, Judith Vision on which this tower is built. So... Um, she probably would have thought of doors. And spoon-powered air conditioning. Fuck yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I I take it we exit the spoon tower? The spower. <laughs> that, that, that's something different in Dutch. Okay. Spower is someone who is actively vomiting. Hmm. Awesome. But also a lot of power and so we have spoons and the tower. Yeah. The power. As you leave the tower, Moira is um holding it together. Um she she is standing in in like a square meter that's left of the dining room and everything else is replaced with tower and you can you can see that it is actually growing into the ceiling of the room and basically leaves um y you've seen uh since the 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 ceiling in the tower is a little bit higher than in here you you have seen through uh, other windows and there came a little bit of sunlight in there but that's not possible from this side so there should be mountainous rocks all around the tower but well you, you did some messed up magic and uh Apparently, the Seta broke the dampening spell without breaking a sweat. So, Moira, I got rid of him. Mm hmm. He's gone. I'm sorry for mm -hmm. your dining room. 
these days. It's still the echo. Yes, it, you have more room now, if anything. It's still a dining room, a dining tower. <laughs> Is that really the biggest of our troubles now? Very defensible position if something happens. You, you have no idea how many people worked on this room well three or four people worked on this one <laughs> i yes. just give her like a pat on the shoulder like i also did not want to get this that far but haters we did not make it that large no you didn't the creature that is attached to you did attached to me it found you yes and I, I don't know where it comes from. I, thought, I, I think it finds me by smell more than anything, by recognition, not by attachment. I have never seen or heard or anything like it um, of satyrs and the likes from the other side of the gate. I met it's him when not I woke. its original habitat. And it was there as the gate opened. It knew how to find you. There is sympathy, there is an attachment. Do we need to buy a leash for that thing? Oh god, how am I going to find a leash that's tall enough? I think it has you on a leash. Shh! Yeah. Also talked about <clears throat> he found you a leash. Like, something weighing him down. To be honest, Get rid of it, put it on a leash, put it into a cellar. I don't care. What I care about are the treasures that we are protecting here. Mm -hmm. And I need this room to go back what this was before if there is any hope for this I need to do that um, and I think since the um, since the tethering has started and well I need to take care of this mm -hmm. and you might stumble into anything else you don't understand and I'll wreak havoc my fingers off of it I was thinking that maybe you should go for a walk. And leave all the others behind. N no. Um, you and you and you and she nods into the direction of Nancy. 
her. Maybe you find a good place to take a rest, take a drink, take some time. Sure. Might there be a library where I can do nothing wrong, like an unmagical one with just some theorems? You know what? Yes. Yes, we have a almost entirely profane tea room. Yes. We're gonna we're, we're gonna find it. It's it's gonna be fine. I just You just just walk Oh sorry, you can't walk down the hallway because it is blocked by a giant metal tower. We could go through the tower. We can make new doors. I, I think Judith was smart enough to not block off any entrances in the creation of the tower. I don't know. Um, intelligence doesn't seem to be the parameter we are working with right now. <laughs> X fucking cues you. Brian is like very insulted, but still <laughs> takes it in stride. <laughs> She, she just points at the tower that more or less destroyed, probably from her perspective, a priceless, never restorable artifact room, a relic. Yeah. Then don't go spelunking with a satyr. Don't bring satyrs. I did not do that on purpose. Yeah. Anyway, um. walkies. Walkies? Okay. Um, apparently, Judith was smart enough to not bl block any entrances. So you can walk through the tower. Or explore the tower. But things are going to move, so we need to leave this place. Probably. The arcane theorem. <laughs> hmm? What do you want, Judith? I, look. Uh, again, I'm like really super out of my element here. I. Do you like books? Wanna go drink at the bar? Maybe hit on my ex girlfriend? Ooh. We could check up on the upstairs, upstairs, upstairs. Wait, yeah, wait, that that wait, seems wait. like a lot more We can go back. Yeah. Oh. That's good to know. Uh, they never told you to stay. They, uh, the first plan actually involved you going back and being murder assassins. Oh, I wasn't there that session. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so maybe catching up with people, looking into things might be a good idea. And putting Nancy to bed. And putting Nancy to bed. Yeah, making sure Nancy's safe is kind of my priority, right? Anyway, who knows the way? I guess oh, I know the way. You know the way. Um, okay. You guys also may find good through the tower and to the library they pointed to the walls. Are we going to split up again, though? <laughs> I think sticking together would be a great idea. No um, you can... I think we can have a short narrative detour by, well, we need to find the way out because the the original entrance is right now blocked by being tethered to a new place. So, um, yeah, you, 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 you managed to, to weird Judy off of the path and you reach one of the libraries. And library is a word that doesn't doesn't sit well. There are knowledge containers of all shapes and forms here. 
and they have been awo uh, awoken who have murdered for less. Um, this is a conservatory of, of arcane knowledge um, that's I mean, you, you basically you can imagine the sizable library of a uh, university, but every every single tome is about magic. There's not one single piece of paper or parchment or papyrus or whatever uh, that is about mundane things. Um, there's a there are a lot of essays and, and books about uh, how how the mundane world is actually horrible for magic, but um, that's a different story. Since it's about how this this place is is just the phenomenon. It's not even the lie. It's it's a place that everyone is being banished to. People are damned to live amongst the unawoken, the hylics, and being incarcerated here. And they they want to leave. They want to go home. But that's just like the basic idea one can get if you skim the the titles of the of the books and you you have a look at some of the um of the uh carvings in the walls and in the shelves and as you look up into a space that is basically molded to contain m more books and more more knowledge and it's a little bit like the dragon dimension uh, with uh, a Terry Pratchett's, like the space between two books is filled with another book. There's there's no no separation because there's still another book between there. It's it's incredible crap. Technically, I would never leave here, but for the sense of sorry, I will just <laughs> look for a map that might show another way how we can back up upstairs. That's very gracious of you. Thank you. Um, yeah, the the order made you the offer to stay and to study if you if you get rid of um, the attackers and decide, yeah, well, actually, I, I, I want to learn. Then they are very happy to teach you everything. But it's now time to return to the surface. And it's already dark. You've left round about noon and the sun has set. As you come back to the castle walls, a cold evening breeze Greece greets you. And since we are high up in the mountains, it's cold and crystal clear. There's no dust in there. There is no smell of sulfur, no smell of burnt flesh. It's beautiful, clear, crisp air. It's getting muddled soon by the noise from the event hall where the stage is built and the people are playing. And I think tonight you hear some shouting about people uh, wanting to, to try these, these new and, and amazing pre-generated pre characters for, for this, for this uh, extremely popular game called Curseborn. And um, people are tearing themselves up. 
just to get a chance to get to one of these tables and uh, it's just the the new shit but um there's also music I feel like it was a different game earlier but i'm probably remembering things wrong there's been <laughs> enough strangeness in the <laughs> you know trends tend to change fast but uh we do. i love how every you know, single time it was something different every single time there was something different i just i can't put my finger on it but hmm hmm you mm -hmm. know, it's probably just another one of these weird side effects of magic. And it's, just like... it's not that I want to mind wash people uh, or compel or gently push. <laughs> no, that's not what's happening. Okay. Um, you're back to the surface. And there's a lot going on in in the in the big hall where also the bar is located and um last night you have uh, a few of you have been on the um i i actually need my my map that's on on the cannon battery but this time there are actually people out there and um, judging from the amount of alcohol that has been uh, poured into cups, um, these are probably people who have known each other for a few hours or even some of them for years and are now taking the opportunity to, to get to know each other a little bit better. So um, you would have to to take a walk down to the outer uh, walls of the of the casa to to have time on your own on the fresh air, or you have to go to your rooms, or maybe find people who might be looking for you because I don't know weren't you supposed to call in an hour or so? Yeah, we were. We got distracted. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no. Let's, uh, yeah. Let's go check in on, on if she's at where we were supposed to meet up. She isn't. And then let's go ahead and check in on the room where we said the person was. Um, you're looking for Sadie, and she is, yeah, sitting in Sophie Bugar's room. Okay. On the floor, and um, she had some cushions stuffed behind her back so she can lean against the leg of the table because she's not going to lean against the runic walls no f fuck you and she got a lot of paper around her and you can see that she tried to draw the runes onto the paper but it just it it's not working out and she looks exhausted and tired and maybe a tiny bit angry maybe so yeah this is a little complicated to explain uh and i'm afraid i don't have any explanation that will actually for why I'm late to, that will actually make any of this better. Uh, so I'm just not going to. <laughs> oh, oh, for a second, I thought you would actually tell me anything. I will tell you whatever you want. I'm just not going to try and explain this. There's just 
there are too many details that don't make sense out of context. So if you have any questions, happily I will answer them. I'm just not going to sit down and explain what has just transpired over the last. I actually don't know how long I was there. She looks at her watch. Um, nine hours. Yeah, I can't explain nine hours of my absence at all. Mm -mm. No, but if you have questions, I will happily answer them. I will tell you whatever you want to know. Quick question. Where's Nancy? No, she's also here. Well, no, we put Nancy back in the room. Okay. Let, let's um, make sure, and we locked it. We made sure she was safe and asleep. And are Brian and Ali with Judith right now? I heard they are welcome to come with me or they can stay. I'm going to look for Capelli. Yeah. Okay. I think um, I'm just going to go to bed. Okay. And do nothing extraordinary anymore. Because both Ellie and Josie are suddenly dead tired. I'm sorry. It's all right. <laughs> Could you p please close the door? Yeah. Sure. Uh, okay. And good night, Ellie. Sleep well, I guess. She deserves it. I am sure. And after Ali left and closed the door, Sadie gets up. And... I, oh, I'm going to read uh, this lady's mini bar. Okay. Yeah, you do. Nobody did before. So there is probably some canned. Um, whiskey but also some sparkling wine and other interesting stuff and as you raid the mini bar and the door is closed sadie gets up and just lets loose a scream of frustration and anger and <sighs> after she did this she's like making one for her too yeah thank you I am. I was thinking the last seven hours about all the questions I'm going to ask you okay. about what all the this. Sh I I, I want to start with a question of my own. Um, is, is it better now that you understand what we're dealing with? from your perspective, or would you have preferred for me to keep talking about knitting? This is a different kind of anger. And yeah. I think I'm less angry at you. I am, oh, don't get me wrong. I am angry at you for leaving me for nine hours mm -hmm. without telling me where you're going or that you might be okay because this is fucking frightening uh, i can assure you that you would not be better off having known where i was going and uh that you would probably have more questions than you do now honestly i don't think that We built a tower of spoons with a mythical creature. We unexploded some people and then we re exploded them. That, and... might be, that might not be the most accurate description of what that happened, of what happened with that, but it's the most relatable, I think. So, are you in danger? Am I in danger? Are people in danger? Yeah. To all of this? Mm hmm mm hmm 
Okay. I... Also, I don't know who we can trust here. Well, I know I can trust Ellie. I know I can trust Nancy, but also she's kind of in a coma because she nearly drowned in nightmare water. Long story. Um, we went to another dimension. Brian, uh, Brian is aware, but I believe he is with us acting out of his own enlightened self-interest. So I wouldn't necessarily say I trust him, but I would say that at this point in time, his goals align with ours. Or at okay. least mine. I don't know what your goals are right now. I've not I have since stopped making assumptions about people. Uh, I decided uh -huh. that whatever is happening here and it's looking like a horror movie, I want to survive. Point one. Yeah. Point two, I don't want to survive like uh, Sophie is probably doing on a rescue bed two stories downstairs and waiting for a helicopter which we can't reach yeah um so that already too please continue uh, this is delightful Okay, I think I'm done. I, I I was thinking that I might want you to, to make it through too, but I'm not sure on this one anymore. That's okay. I deserve that. I do. I absolutely 100% deserve that. Not just for what I dragged you into, but for so many things that we really just don't have the time or energy to unpack right now. Anyway, what else can I tell you about what I've been up to for the last nine hours? I don't think anything of that matters, really, because... Okay. But I'm also not lying to you. I'm getting that. Mm -hmm. I was, at first, doing my best to keep you out of it. And trying in my own fucked up way to protect you didn't work I decided to bring you into this so let's go back to that first question is it better that I told you or would you prefer I kept telling you about knitting I prefer to be angry about the right reasons okay doesn't answer the question but I'll accept it I guess it's Thank you for being honest. I'll take it. I am not expecting you to forgive me for any of this. I don't forgive myself for any of this. Is, is there anything we can do to maybe get point one and point two of my agenda through? Like surviving and not ending up like Sophie. Making sure that you survive is my second priority. And it's not because I don't think that Ellie and Brian can't handle themselves or can't need it's I, I think that Ellie and Brian can handle themselves in surviving this on their own they don't necessarily need me they seem to have far more resources than I do and are a lot more flexible in their world views than I am so I think Ellie and Brian can handle this um but making sure that you and Nancy survive and get out of this intact is uh, is my priority and then Ellie and then Brian and then everyone else maybe not the people responsible oh yeah our, our bosses are responsible she she draws up her eyebrows but very soon is 
like well uh figures yeah. um mm -hmm. okay the best advice i can give you would be to go to your room lock the door and don't let anyone in I don't know if that'll actually protect you from what's going on, but it'll at least protect you from people trying to fuck with your mind. A little bit. I think. Can't I leave? Mm -hmm. Can't I leave? Like, there's a bus on the parking lot. You know what? If you want to pack that bus full of as many people as you can and get them out of here, please. Please go. Please. That would be a huge weight off my mind. I will give you a phone number for someone that you can contact on the outside once you get to a place where you can make a call and let them know that, let him know that we're here, me and Nancy are here, and we're doing our damnedest to get out of here. And to stop whatever the fuck is happening. Um, and you see the shift from detective mode to um, this is basically survival existentialism. This yeah, you're right. I think this is probably the the first time we had like a conversation like this in a long time and that's even without I mean, explaining anything. I'm sorry. What 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 possible explanation could I give you that would make any of this better? There isn't any. I just there's just some some sort of honesty that I, I wish I we had earlier. I don't know. It's it's all right. It's sure I could have been more honest, but it is so hard to be honest and to be true at the same time. It's not only I I'm not only shooting at you. I maybe not the knitting, but there have been other instances I I could have been more lenient, I think. Conversations that if we're lucky we can have later. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Tell you what. We survive. I'll meet you at the airport bar, and we will get fucked up. Sounds good. And yeah, she's she's putting down the empty glass that yeah somehow lost all its content during your conversation and. Um, she, uh, she looks around in the room, starts picking up the papers, putting them into a pile, taking them, and leaves. Um, not too fast, not too slow. But out of here. And 
there there's more that could be said but maybe that's that's for an airport bar I, i'm gonna i am going to put a pin in that and we'll address that later thank you for your honesty thank you and i don't know have you yeah angry tears probably but uh um have you seen sadie cry oh yeah yeah you you see that's something that's going to happen mm. and if she if she stays it's gonna happen in front of you and she is she seems to be fine that's going to happen but she's also fine with with leaving i'll um, give her a hug wait this is it's emotion, due to its emotional uh maturity <laughs> developing right before everyone's eyes she is hesitant at first but then embraces you and the hug and you feel something hot and uh, liquid on your neck as the tears run down yeah we're not that emotionally mature so it's the there there yep let it out sport yeah this this helps to to feel a little bit awkward and and stop the tears <laughs> she um yeah <laughs> thank you too it's um i i didn't expect any of this to happen You know what? Me neither. Good luck to both of us. Yep. And then she leaves. Um, we have just a few more minutes, but I think we have a brief check-in with Brian. I'm going to be <clears throat> looking for uh, my teacher, Mr. Gabinath. Gabali, sorry. Anna. But uh, I'm going to first look at the bar and then see if I can text him on my phone. And he uh, writes back to you that he is at the chapel. And then I will get ready, making some last notes in my book, my notebook, and then making my resolve, and then go down to the chap. Once again, it is lit by candles. Not as many as last time, but um, a few. And he too is sitting on the floor. In front of him, a small plate with um uh with a piece of tiramisu and he is looking at it with a fork and a knife and dissecting it i grasp the spoon in my hand my my pockets just matching it up in my head and then just ask him very plainly. Are you looking for the sanctum down there? He um he peels off the the uh chocolate powder on top of the tiramisu and uh eats a bit of that and then 
looks at you and says, you're looking for, for many things. I am looking for a lot of knowledge. I have seen a lot of knowledge. Oh. You have entered the escape room. <clears throat> yes. Sorry. I I am not fond of the phrasings. It's marketing speech. You you have been down there. At I, have, I have seen many a great things. Many very strange things. Strange creatures. But the one that piqued me the most was the most beautiful library I have ever seen. Mm -hmm. I've I've heard of of libraries like that. There aren't many of them. And it is rumored that this one is on par with the lost treasures of Alexandria. Might be very close to to finding something extraordinary. Mm. I want this to find it because the people that hoard it wish to keep it secret. Mm. And that's not what you do with that much, but I mean, I am told power is something you accumulate and make your own. This is their way to making it their own. I heard that some of them are living libraries themselves. Um, maybe even richer than the volumes you might have seen. They have offered me to stay there and learn. Hmm. But I fear that once I do, they will never let me leave. I mean, if you've learned everything they have to offer, I don't think there's anything that could stop you. But, um, another important thing about power is if there are too many sharing it, you become actually powerless. I mean, what is the use if everyone can pick up a knife and use a knife? There must be a difference, right? There should be a regulation on what is learned and what is given. We need to advance as a society. If only two people have a phone, it would be very stupid to help them. Depends on the use of the phone. Um, I mean, you're not entirely wrong. We are here because they keep this knowledge to themselves and doing everything they can to um, keep it away from everyone else. And in a way, yes, we are probably liberating it. I, th I like this idea. I like your point of view. So, 
things uh -huh. like forks and spoons and knives we can share among them. But things like nuclear missile codes should be kept guarded a bit better than just hoarding knowledge for the sake of hoarding it and then locking yourself in a cave. You're missing out on the most important things in life. And he holds up the plate of tiramisu. I, I doubt they ever get to taste this. And uh, I doubt they get to taste many other things they are in possession of. So we should put these things to use. Now, do you have an idea on how to proceed? Yes, but me might have to speak about these things in a more private place and under a bit more better thinking, freer thinking and little philosophy even, because at this moment, I three days ago, I was a simple teacher and now I am discovering the gates of a Um, Talking about one faction wanting the others to be murdered. Hmm. Yeah, Which sense, I'm not keen to do. Senseless murder is the thing abhorrent. that people do in caves. Cave and I think I know just the place to have this conversation. He says, stands up and makes a grandiose gesture to change the chapel into something else. And we leave Brian and Capelli, we leave Judy and Sadie, and we leave Ali. Although, not entirely. Not Ali. Because there, there is a skyscraper somewhere. East Coast, and it has a very, very beautiful loft and an infinity pool and orange trees growing on the roof. And we can see an Ellie who is sitting on a very nice um, chair next to the pool and looking across a city, a city with so many streets and rails and strings and music that's drifting up, voices and the sounds of cars. And strings, melodies that intertwine and mingle, just like the fates they represent. And Ellie can hear them, Ellie can see them. Ellie can look at them a tiny bit collecting a dollar bill here a nice drink there and maybe maybe a suitcase that goes missing for a few hours that 
contains a few papers that might have made this world a less desirable place. But, well, who can be a judge of that? We don't know. Ellie rests in her chair and lets the world of the leash for now. And this, my friends, is another almost penultimate episode of Mage Point of No Retreat. And I thank our beautiful audience and our beautiful players for joining me. And we are going in reverse order and starting with Josie. Hey, Josie, tell us who you are, what you're doing. Hi, my name is Josie. They then pronounce I played Ellie. Um, I still have no clue what's going on, but at least you got a satyr in me as a friend. You got how the story goes. <laughs> um, um, both an oncoming heat stroke and just this in general is giving me major brain fog, which is a compliment to you, Tom, and a big finger to the heat gremlins. Um, but yeah. Um, I enjoyed the session and I, I don't mind filler episodes in tabletop games in general. They just give us chances to make towers out of spoons. <laughs> the most beautiful towers of spoons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Do you want to plug anything? Yes, I will uh, copy paste my link as always to the audio drama I am in. So. If you want to hear more of Josie, there is your chance and your opportunity. Um, in an in an audio drama about crowns and fire, I think. <laughs> Apparently not. Okay, thank you. Okay, next one, Ren. Hello, my name is Ren. Dr. for Brian Gilbert, and it's such a thin line between doing something good and doing something great and doing something very horrendous but like most things we will see who win and which side i have picked if i did a good or a bad thing. but once again thanks to him it's as always a pleasure. thank you too so much um ipsy it's you ipsy the bringer of bad ideas i was <laughs> just recently at uh, uh, doing a live stream with Onyx Pathcon for the World Below, where I was uh, I was Nissa, the explosive pop bubble. So uh, on the Dork Tales channel, so check them out too. Um, but uh, I don't really have anything to plug right now, other than uh, all the other stuff that we use to play the bills. So that's what the, the Ash Can, and the uh, the world below we were doing we did that uh, 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 oh gosh what else are we doing we're doing something on backer kit for Travis yes. for his guard lands yeah yeah see? see and we got we got another Kickstarter going for something just watch the free roll again just watch, watch the free roll, roll again yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just watch the entire episode again just watch the whole episode. Uh, and all the other episodes that we've had for this, so you can see all of the other wonderful games that Onyx Path has put out. <laughs> yes. Uh, in the time that we have been uh, making this this wonderful story come to life. That's a brag. Uh, and I also want to promote Texas Movie Pickles. They're great for combat in <laughs> summer heat, and they give the electrolytes, so that's good. And uh, they're cold. Yeah. So enjoy that. And strawberry and cream lollipops. Strawberry and cream lollipops. Not sponsored by any pickle companies or stream, uh, cream and strawberry lollipops. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. 
Yeah, and then then there's me. I am Tom Moore. I am a professional GM over at StartPlaying.Games, and I am uh, having a game of the world below in preparation. So if you are interested in joining that, that's uh, over there at my profile. If you go into GM search and there, just write Tom Murr, and then you will you will find me and uh, the things that I have coming up. I also have two seats left at a Changing the Lost campaign that is going to start in September. So if that's something you're into, um, you're invited to join. And yeah, um, there is Branch Riders right now on uh, Kickstarter and there is uh, Bizarre Kingdoms on Becky Kid. And there are amazing things coming out every week by Onyx Path. So, uh, yeah, hope to see you all soon. Have a wonderful night and goodbye. Don't die of heat goblins, gremlins, you know, heatlings. Yes, Bye. and we will raid a friendly channel of ours, Noblu, who is from the Rolling Nomads, a partner channel of ours back at OPPCon. So, see you there. Bye.